Welcome to Speak English Fluently. I'm your host, Steve Hatherly, and my guest today is Mr. Luke Jones, who was a teacher in Korea for, I would say, a brief stint, but it wasn't really that brief. I think uh, Luke told me as we were chatting before we got started today, it was for a total of eight years. But Luke did make the decision to return to his home country of Wales. And in 2018, that's when Luke decided to develop a YouTube channel, a very popular idea with people these days. But what's more interesting is the focus of the channel, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Well, after achieving a pretty decent level of success, uh, subscribers in the range of around 10,000 people, then it exploded to great success. And now Luke has over 200,000 subscribers. And as I just alluded to, his content deals with the Duolingo English test and that will be the focus of our chat today. Welcome to Speak English Fluently, Luke Jones. It's great to meet you, sir. Yeah, thank you for the kind introduction. And it's good to meet, meet you. And it's a pleasure to be on this show with you. Wonderful. So you were, you were yourself in Korea for, did I get that right? Eight years in total? Yeah, it was eight, almost nine years. Uh, I lived in a small city called Changwon first. Then I moved to Seoul, where I got my say my full-time job at a university. Mm -hmm. And that was brilliant. I actually loved my time there. I learned so much. I met so many great people. Wonderful. After you returned to Wales, you decided to make the YouTube channel. Was that upon the return to Wales or was that something you were thinking about during your time here in Korea? Yeah, that was before actually. So uh, I moved to Wales about six months ago, but as you mentioned, I started my channel in 2018. Basically, I just saw the trend of online education. Mm. Uh, even in 2018, it looked like lots of teachers were going online with their courses, uh, their, their lectures, so on. And I just, yeah, I wanted to be an, a part of that. Uh, I, wanted, I tried to keep myself you know, forward thinking and being as innovative as possible. So I, I thought that'd be a good thing to try out. I started off slowly, like everyone who has ever tried YouTube will know. Uh, of it's course. It's a very hard, uh, hard slug. That's a start, but you know, after a while, it does. If you if you're good and you try hard, you you can become successful on the channel uh, as a teacher, especially. That's great advice for any uh, aspiring YouTuber. I think not just yeah, a, a, sure. a language teacher. So, yeah, what was exactly. it? I, I'm curious to know what was it that that made it happen. And maybe you don't even know, but the subscribers were around 10,000, which is pretty impressive. I mean, yeah, a lot of YouTubers say it's really hard to get to even a thousand subscribers, but you got to 10 and then all of a sudden, boom. So do you know yeah. what it was? Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah. It's, it's really clear. If you look into my analytics, uh, I changed my subject matter. So I was mm. doing general English, the same stuff as on this short English channel. Uh, a lot of other channels do the same type of content. And I was doing the same, but then I differentiated myself, differentiated myself by focusing on the new Duolingo English test. And it was just a, you know, it's a popular niche without that many content creators. So that, that's basically it. And the name the gap, of, basically. And, and the name of your channel is? Uh, Teach the Luke and then hyphen Duolingo English test. <laughs> nothing, nothing very uh, crazy about it, but you know, yeah. Very That's straightforward. We'll nice get that. In, we'll get that information from you again at the uh, the end of our chat. Yeah. Well, well, let's get into it then. Um, the 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 uh, the the main point of our chat for today. So the Duolingo English test. Now, I'm familiar with Duolingo. I myself have used it. I studied yeah. French in Canada in school. After mm -hmm. living in Korea for a long time, I wanted to brush up on my French and. I went to Duolingo to do that, hmm. but I didn't know that there was something very specific for Duolingo, that being an English test. So can you tell us just in general what that is? Yeah, sure. So the Duolingo English test is basically a new way to certify your English level. So it's very similar to the other popular tests, the IELTS and TOEFL. So if you want, if a student, an international student wants to study in the US, Canada, UK, Australia, you name it then they need to certify their English using a proficiency exam. So the Duolingo test is the newest proficiency test out there. It's not that new, actually. So it's about five years old, uh, which is relatively new, but still not, not, not that new. However, it was during the COVID pandemic that this test became really popular. How long have you mentioned uh, IELTS and, and TOEFL? Those, I guess, IELTS is mainly popular in the UK, if I'm correct, and then TOEFL. Yeah, that's right. 
um, perhaps uh, internationally. IELTS is internationally recognized as well. Those have been around for a really long time, yeah, right? Very long time. Yeah, I don't know exactly. It's a very long time. Um, mm. I, it's hard to say. I don't. I don't know exactly uh, how long they've been around for, but. Yeah, they're very well established and they have a really good reputation, and rightly so. They're, they're very good tests. Mm. But the dual uh, lingo English test is relatively new, even though it's been five years. Relatively speaking, Rel- it's relatively not necessar- speaking. Uh, necessarily a long time. How is it different? How does it differentiate itself from the IELTS and the TOEFL tests? Yeah, it, it, there, there are actually there are so many differences, but there are three main differences I think I should talk about. So the first one is that this exam is far more affordable and accessible to students. The IELTS and TOEFL, they're quite expensive. I'm not sure if you're aware, but they're, oh God, $200, $300, Mm. somewhere in that range, Mm. depending on what country you take it in. And that's a lot of money for a lot of students, right? The Duolingo test, on the other hand, is only $49. So in that case, it's far more affordable. It's much more accessible because it's only a computer-based test. Hmm. You don't need to go to a test center to take this exam. You just do it. Uh, you just need to find a quiet room and get uh, you know get your computer out with good internet access, and then you're good to go. Uh, so that, you yeah. can take the Duolingo test. Sorry to interrupt you. You can take no. that four times. Uh, and take the TOEFL test or the IELTS test one time. Yeah, exactly. Right. So and that leads sorry, me. Can I, can I, mm. oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I want to talk a bit more about the accessibility because. I think for people like you and I who live in very developed countries, the idea of going to a test center to take an exam is not that hard, right? Mm. We live, we can easily get to one maybe within an hour or two. But for a lot of poorer students, let's say in other developing countries, uh, that's that's sometimes a really big challenge to get to mm. a test center, right? They might have to travel a day or two days and use you know a lot of money to get there. So the fact that they that the Duolingo test is done at home on their computer. That's, that's actually a really big deal. And it's, it's game changing in my mind for a lot of poorer students around the world. Well, that, and I, I think it would encourage students to take the test perhaps more often than they yeah. might take the IELTS or the TOEFL test, because number one, it's cheaper, as you mentioned, yeah. you know, you yeah. could take, you could take the IELTS or the TOEFL once and take the Duolingo test four times, but, exactly, for, yeah. but for other yeah. students, just that motivation of having to it's like going to the gym almost sometimes, right? You know, I, I, I really want to take the test this time, but I'd have to go all the way hundreds of miles to get yeah. there where yeah. I, you could take the Duolingo English test in your living room in your, in your underwear if you yeah. wanted to. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you actually could do that. Uh, and the test is much shorter. It takes about an hour, whereas the IELTS and TOEFL, they t- tend to take all day if you include uh, traveling and you know, all the other stuff. So the universities um, around the world, when we're talking about certification for students, Mm. um, of course, IELTS is accepted. Of course, TOEFL is accepted. But what about the acceptance with Duolingo, uh, the English test, only being around for five years or so? Is it widely accepted by universities, English-speaking countries, uh, universities around the world? Yeah, that's a really important question for a lot of test takers. Why take a test if the universities don't accept it? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So the answer is yes and no. Uh, In the US and Canada, oh, I think almost every university accepts this exam, which is fantastic. However, in the UK or Australia or other European countries, it's a bit of a mixed bag. You have to really go and check your individual university to see if they would accept this test as a, as you know, proof of your English ability. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe that you know, the Duolingo, Duolingo as a company is an American company, mm-hmm. right? So I think that probably has some influence on the American universities. Uh, on top of that, in the UK, we've had a couple uh, visa scandals in the past with the other exams like the TOEIC. So I think for the UK, they're pretty strict and they, they rely heavily on IELTS for all types of visas, including student visas. Is it becoming more widely accepted now? Can, can we see a trend in universities um, from English-speaking countries around the world where it is becoming more widely accepted now? Yeah, for sure. Especially since the COVID pandemic again, um, a lot of students around the world didn't have that opportunity to go to a test center to do the IELTS or TOEFL. So you know, for universities, they want international students. And the only option a lot of students had to uh, you know, certify their English was to do the Duolingo English test. So during that time, uh, you know, thousands of universities started accepting the exam and most of them have you know, stuck around and they, they still do accept it. 
especially, like I said, especially in North America. Can you see a trend conversely? Can you see a trend with students now where students are aware that the Duolingo, uh, Duolingo English test is, is becoming more uh, widely accepted? Because I would think as a student, you know, you might know about IELTS and TOEFL and think those are your two choices and, and mm. that's about it. And you wouldn't even think to maybe hop on the internet and see if there are other options. Are yeah. students now around the world becoming more aware of the Duolingo English test and, and, and the fact that it is becoming more widely accepted? Yeah, I, I believe so. I believe so. It's hard for me to give a, you know, a definitive answer on that, but I believe so. If you look on Google Trends as mm -hmm. an indicator, then the popularity is always increasing. So that, that sign uh, signifies to me that, yes, I think more students are aware of it and, you know, quite frankly, would rather take it than the IELTS or TOEFL. Mm -hmm. uh, the Duolingo test, I think we'll talk more about the questions later, but it, yeah. it is a much more friendly test mm -hmm. than the IELTS or TOEFL. It's not intimidating. They've done a good job of making the experience, you know, relatively pleasant. Whereas the other exams are very, you know, academic, paper based. You go to a center. It's, oh, it's quite, I mean, quite intimidating. I've seen yeah. they're intimidating for native English speakers. Oh, I've, they're hard. I've they're, seen they're those, hard. those yeah. TOEFL questions, some of those TOEFL questions, and I've thought to myself, how on earth, even a student whose level or proficiency in English was pretty good. How would they be able to even understand what question is being posed? They're long-winded questions a lot of the yeah. time. They're very difficult to answer, require critical thinking perhaps sometimes as well. You're yeah. right when you say those tests are intimidating. They, they, for sure they are. And I, yeah, Duolingo have done a good job of making their, yeah, the, the experience a lot friendlier. Um, yeah, they've done a good job of that. You know, that, it's not surprising because they, you know, originally are an application for mm. le language learning, general language learning, so they have that skill set. Um, but it's it's definitely a friendlier exam for sure. I think the cost, going back to that point too, um, makes it less intimidating for the students as well. Because when you're spending that much money on a test to be taken, uh, that puts more pressure on you as a student, right? Oh, a huge, it's a huge amount of pressure. Yeah. And like I said, especially for students who come from like poorer countries or developing countries, that's, mm -hmm. that's a lot of money, $200. Like, you know, it's a lot of money. So, so yeah. the, the test can be taken when? Is it on a specific schedule, the Duolingo English mm -hmm. test, or can it be taken at any time? It can be taken at any time. Basically, the student takes it whenever and wherever he or she wants to do it. So and if you've got again back to the accessibility of the test, yeah. that's that's a big that's a that's a huge thing for a lot of people. So if you have deep pockets, you could take the test Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if you uh, wanted to. Uh, not exactly. You okay. can take two tests uh, every thirty days. Okay, still. So there is a limit on that. So yeah, I, I think yeah, that's probably a wise move on their part, uh, on Duolingo's part, not to allow students to take it all the time. It, you know, it adds to, rely, to the reliability of the test, mm. so they can only do it twice every 30 days. Fair yeah. point. How does that compare to the IELTS and the TOEFL? Are they on a schedule, a specific schedule as well? It's, their, their tests are further apart, if I'm, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, yeah I, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, because most of the tests are done at a test center, of course, there's a you know, schedule for that. Mm. I, my wife took the IELTS uh, just a few months ago. Um, how was her? I think it was like once every two weeks, maybe, or something like that. How yeah. was her experience with that as, as uh, a, from a student's yeah. perspective? Yeah, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. So mm. she took it for, to get her um, UK visa. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, she, her English is great, but she still had to learn strategies for the test mm -hmm. um, and then go to a test center and, you know, speak to a, another human, an, an old British guy. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, she didn't like it at all. She was exhausted. Um, she did well, but that's, you know, that's beside the point. She, it was, it was, you know, it's a tough day for her, for sure. You, you mentioned the, the fact that, yeah, it, it, there are specific ways to prepare uh, for the IELTS mm. and the TOEFL test and, and there are classes yeah. out there about that. And I'll, and I'll get to that in just a sec, uh, tools yes. of how to prepare. But what types mm. of questions um, can a student see on the Duolingo English test? Yeah, right. So I will answer that question in one second, but I just want to make something clear that um, one of the goals of the Duolingo test was that it, it tests a student's English ability rather than their ability to take a test, mm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So actually, I met, I met up with the Duolingo marketing team about a year ago, and they made that very clear to me as a teacher. Mm. They, they don't want the test to be like an IELTS or TOEFL where you have to learn strategies 
not just English, but strategies to pass the test, or you have okay. to write your essay in a certain way. They they don't want to do that. They want it to be a, a you know a test of someone's English ability, and that's it. Um, yeah. So but, that's yeah. that's different for that's a different perspective for a lot of students, particularly mm -hmm. students here in Korea, but probably students around the world. Where the point so, yeah. the point of preparing for a, a mathematics test is to show that you know the mathematics on that particular day, but it's not necessarily meant to show that you've got a really <laughs> deep understanding yeah. of, of the material. Perhaps exactly right. right. Exactly. That, that's another major yeah. advantage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the questions. What types of questions can we see? Yeah. So there are. There are 13 questions in total. Um, there's been a, a change recently, so around 13 different questions. I won't go over each one, one by one, like that'll take a long time, but I'll just mm. kind of categorize them. So we have the first category, which I call rapid fire questions. Uh, okay. I'm not sure what the Duolingo test really call them, but I call them rapid fire questions because they are quick. Mm. You have about four or five different types of questions and you only have between 60 and 90 seconds to answer them. Okay. Very quick. So, for example, a vocabulary, you get a list of quest, a list of words, uh, 18, for example, and mm -hmm. you have to choose which ones are real English words. Uh, okay. Right. There are All a bunch right. of fake ones and real ones. You choose the real ones. Mm -hmm. You have 60 seconds to do that. You have a dictation, you know, quick one sentence, listen and type out what you hear. Okay. Um, there's reading a sentence out loud, you know, to test your pronunciation. These types of rapid fire, quick questions. So that's within one. That's within one question. You you said that there are thirteen questions. There are thirteen but, different types. So uh, dictation being one type, vocabulary. Gotcha. There are two vocab questions. There's a I read see. aloud question. But rather than go through all of them, I thought I'll categorize them. So gotcha. those are those quick questions. They come yeah. at the at the beginning of the test. I see. Then you have a reading comprehension section, which is you know kind of standardized. You you read a paragraph and you answer some questions. Mm -hmm. After that, you have the speaking and writing questions where you have to describe a photo through speaking and writing, and you have to do like longer responses to certain prompts. And then after that, you have the interview section where you have to write a response and give an oral, oral response, and the universities can actually view your answers for those. Ah, so that part of the test is on camera. So part of it, it's by the sounds of things, part of the test is... Um, perhaps multiple choice. Some of it is uh, audio through your computer, yeah, through the student's yeah, exactly. computer, and then yes. some of it is on camera uh, yeah, exactly. as well. Ah, I see. Yeah, right. It was all kind of filmed, like in, in, in the top corner of the screen, you can okay. see your face. But the last section that's uh, sent to the university you're applying to is so they can see your response through speaking and they can read your written response. Uh, there's another, there's another key, a uh, few key points I should mention, um, mm. especially for the speaking and writing question. Well, especially for the writing questions. Uh, for the writing one, you only have five minutes to write a paragraph based on a prompt you're given. Whereas on the other exams, you typically have around half an hour or forty minutes. So it's you have to be, you have to be thinking quite quickly on this exam. You have to mm -hmm. read the questions and start typing almost immediately for for every question. Yeah. So that's that's a that's a that's challenging for students. Sure. So by the sounds of things, um, it is a better test of proficiency in general, but it's not necessarily easy by any stretch. It doesn't mean that a student can simply not prepare at all for this no, test. No, I don't think so. Um, in terms of it being easier, uh, a lot of people, when they see it, they think, oh, yeah, this is easier than the IELTS or TOEFL. And mm. I agree in some to some extent that the, you know, as friendly as it looks a lot easier, but it's, it's more of a different skill you have to practice. You have to do things quicker. You have a lot of different types of questions coming at you really fast. So it, um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's easier. And actually, if you look on the Duolingo test website, they actually have done a lot of research on this, where they do a comparison between, you know, a student's score in IELTS and the Duolingo. And, it, you know, it, it, it matches up pretty well. From a teacher's perspective, from your perspective, when you yeah. where you've <clears throat> pardon me, where you've seen the IELTS, you've seen the TOEFL, and you've seen the Duolingo English test, you've obviously focused your channel on the Duolingo mm. English test. That leads me to believe that from a teacher's perspective, you think this one is the best choice for students. Um, well, yeah, I do. I think if the uni if the university a student wants to apply for accepts the test, then mm. yeah, hundred percent, I would always take always advise them to take this exam. Uh, it's like I said, it's so much cheaper, <laughs> it's much more accessible, and mm. it's it's a lot. Yeah, it just takes away a lot of stress, I think, and allows students to perform at the best because they can do it at a time and place where they feel comfortable.
Yeah, that's an excellent point as well, because, you know, if you're scheduled to take the TOEFL test or the IELTS test on a particular day at a particular time, and you happen to be having an off day, or yeah, maybe you're yeah. maybe something happened, and you, you have a cold. You, yeah, for example, yeah, you know, exactly. Or you didn't like get much sleep the night before. Well, then, sorry, you're stuck to their schedule, and you've paid that two hundred dollars. So that's it. Whereas with the Duolingo English test, mm. it's up to the student whenever they want, when they feel good, when they feel confident. Yeah. Boom, let's do the test. I'm exactly. ready for it. Yeah, exactly. It, like it's like I said, it's a lot friendlier. Yeah. Mm. It's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, overall, it's just a better, a better experience for for test takers. Kind of want make, makes me want to take the test, and I am an English yeah. speaker. <laughs> <laughs> it's still hard, man. Take my fifty dollars. <laughs> I've taken it a few times, and af- after the hour, I was pretty tired. You know, it's, it's a right? lot. It's, a, it's very fast. You get a lot of questions uh, in a short space of time, and you have to be thinking. You know, even for, as an English speaker, it was it was quite exhausting. Did you ace it? Did you get a hundred out of? Yeah, a I got a good score. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, that's that's comforting. I know. I know what. I know what the answer, I know, especially for like the speaking and writing ones, I know how to formulate a good answer to like hit the, hit the checkpoints. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's a great point for students to know is that mm. for, for your channel specifically, you have yeah. taken the test, you know, yeah, exactly sure. what kind of questions are asked and you, and you yeah. also know how to answer the questions properly as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, prior to, for my, prior to me starting the YouTube channel, uh, I was a teacher and I taught academic English, you know, helping students pass the IELTS test. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the, the way you, the way to score high on these tests is actually quite similar with the IELTS and TOEFL. In, in your, let's say, speaking or writing answer, you need to show a good awareness of the, of the question. So you answer the question correctly and in mm-hmm. detail. You need to show good vocabulary. So using synonyms or different verb tenses, you know, that kind of stuff. Grammar. Um, to use complex sentences in your answer. Like mm-hmm. there's, 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 there are things that will, things you can do and you can practice that will guarantee, guarantees in a strong word, but will help you get a good score. So yeah. what kind of tools, uh, let's get to that point now. Um, we sure. mentioned that there are specific strategies for IELTS and TOEFL mm. where students are taught how to take the test. Mm. Yes. Um, right. With Duolingo's English test, I'm sure that there are methods or strategies that students can 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 learn as well. What types of things are those, if you could give an example or two? Yeah. Okay. So like I mentioned, the rapid fire questions, the dictation, the vocabulary, that's really a test of your English skills, listening mm. or vocab. But when it comes to the speaking and writing ones, there are things you can practice in order to give a better response. So just for example, um, yeah, one of the spoken questions is to describe a photograph and you need to do it for about 90 seconds. Now, I'm not sure about you, but that's quite hard. I was going to say- a photo for 90 seconds is a long time. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of students, they get, get a bit stuck. Like they know what to talk about. They know the words, they know what to say, but they can't speak for very long because we don't do that. So there are things like what I teach, which can almost like triggers to allow you to speak longer. Mm. So, you know, for example, like you can focus on the location of things in the photograph, go into detail, you know, where, where is almost everything located in the photo? Mm -hmm. You can look at the, uh, the main objects, if they're people or animals, like what are they doing using adverbs and adjectives to describe that, Um, those type of strategies. Uh, if there's a person in the picture, you could even say, okay, think of an emotion and then look at their face and say, oh, they, I, I feel like they must be feeling like this today. And then you yeah. can expand on that by saying, because perhaps this happened to them in the yeah, morning or exactly. something. You, you're yeah. allowed to speculate, actually. You can, yeah. you can definitely do that on tests. And that's and also a thing I teach is speculation and how to make assumptions based on what's happening in the photo. That would make that a lot easier, right? If you could Well, just... it makes you speak for longer, right? Yeah, that, well, that's really important. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like an octopus and its legs. Just look at the octopus's body and then yeah, go right. eight, eight legs off the body and just find it. Yeah. That's just eight points. Bit and then, and then you, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's what I teach. So I, I have a website and I have some courses on there and I, I go through that in a lot of detail. My YouTube, actually, I do that on my YouTube videos too, which is yeah. obviously for free, but uh, my website has a bit more detail and a few more PDFs you can download. Okay. Well, let's talk about those right now. So, okay. so the YouTube channel right now, can, give us the name one more time. Yeah. It's uh, Teacher Luke. Hyphen Duolingo English test. Um, if you just search Duolingo test, you'll you'll see my face on the thumbnail. So yeah, that, that's that's enough. What's an example of a recent video that you did for your channel? Oh, uh, I did. Oh, I did um, spoken phrases to mm. also increase your answer and make your answer a lot smoother. So, mm. for example, when you get a spoken prompt, usually you have a topic and then f- 
three or four bullet pointed questions. And what a lot of students do is they answer one question and they stop and then they answer the next and then mm. the next, mm. which is okay. But to make your answer smoother and more fluent, which is on the scoring criteria, you can use different phrases to kind of go transition from one question to the next mm -hmm. and, and move back if you need to. So I, I, that was my latest video. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a, that's a good good way to teach a student how to be a, a, or how to appear to be a good conversationalist Yeah, as well with the ability sure. to kind of keep flowing from one sentence to the next to the next without many interruptions, right? Yeah, transitions, right? Yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. What kind of feedback have you gotten from um, your subscribers who, uh, from some of your over 200,000 subscribers yeah. now? And by the way, congratulations. I, I don't oh, think I, I said congratulations on that. That's a wonderful achievement for you yeah, um, what, uh, yeah, type, yeah. what type of uh, feedback have you gotten from the students uh, it's, it's to be honest most of the comments are just the thank you comments like mm -hmm. you know teacher teacher luke they call me teacher luke thank mm -hmm. you I, I got my score just by watching your youtube videos wow or um you know i actually i have an application which i've developed and at least they try that and they say oh thank you it, it helped me a lot and most of them are just thank you questions um on the other hand i i do have you know some questions about the um the Okay, so if a student breaks a rule on mm -hmm. the Duolingo test, then their test becomes uncertified. So, for example, like mm -hmm. if if you're because you take it at home, you need to make sure your your eyes are pretty much uh, looking at your computer the whole time. You can't okay. move away because they need to uh, validate the test and make sure that no one's cheating, right? Off, someone could be off camera. Show, yeah, yeah okay, so sure. There are a lot. There are lots of rules students need to follow. Um, so I get, I get, do get a lot of emails about students or comments um, saying. You know, can you help me? I keep I keep mm. breaking this rule by mistake. Basically, um, it's very it's kind of hard for me to respond to those questions to those types of comments. But um, yeah, yeah. So it's basically, two. I have thank you comments and help me comments. <laughs> please, please help me stop breaking this rule. Yeah. Right. Well, goodness, yeah. thank thank goodness that's not a rule for me. I think I've looked away from the camera numerous oh, times during a chat. Yeah, it's yeah. Just a natural and reaction for people, right? It is. Unfortunately, it is. But. Yeah, no, it is. And I feel sorry for students because it's not easy to stare at your computer the whole time for, sure. for a whole hour. Yeah. But you have to remember that this Duolingo test, they are allowing you to take the test from home and they have to make sure it's secure because it needs to be sure. a reliable test. So you need to focus on uh, following the rules. Um, the test is pretty, they're pretty kind though, the Duolingo, because if you break a rule, you mm -hmm. can actually take the test again for free. Oh, that's a great point so they, to know. Yeah. So that's, that's, I think that's very generous of them. They, they, you'll get like an email saying, you know, you, our proctor found that you were looking away for up to three seconds, oh, you know, five seconds or something and mm -hmm. can't do that. So here's a, you know, a free coupon or something like that. For um, the practice. I, I think they get three, three goes. Okay. For yeah. the practice tests. Um, and, and there are practice tests for the students to take? Yeah, on my website. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Right. Yeah. Oh, we'll so... Yeah, I was Sorry. just going to say, we'll get to the website in, in just a sec, but I wanted to ask, during the student's practice test, do, do they get flagged or is there any guidance that they might be breaking a rule? No, unfortunately mm -hmm. not. No, mm -hmm. no. Gotcha. So I, that, that could be something that the Duolingo team, I could suggest them. That's actually quite a good thing to do because actually on the Duolingo website, you can do a 10 minute practice, practice mm -hmm. test. Mm -hmm. So that could be, that could be good for them to, to flag those type of yeah. rule, you know, rules. Yeah. So from your website, students can get specific guidance from you, recommendations from you on how they should be answering the questions. That's the YouTube material. Uh, when we go to the website, what do we get from your website? Yeah, so I have two, I call them products, two things I, I sell on the website. So I have courses where students can take more detailed lessons from me. The YouTube is a bit, um, no, I, I focus, I do very good. I know I, I, I try very hard to make my YouTube videos as good as possible. Mm -hmm. But the nature of YouTube means that you can't really organize lessons into a course because okay. YouTube is a bit more like vid just individual videos. Whereas on my website, my courses are very organized. We go through strategies from like, you know, sentence one to sentence 10, and, you know, step-by-step -step strategies. And also there's PDFs they can download. Uh, on top of that, I have, uh, I developed an application, a web app, uh, where students can actually take thousands, like I think maybe 10,000 practice questions and get instant feedback. Wow. So it yeah. sounds like the complete package then. <clears throat> From the yeah. website, they can have the course material where it's a it's a step-by-step -step process. And then as a supplement, and correct me at any point if I'm wrong, mm. but as a supplement, go to your YouTube channel 
and learn some guidance there, but also just learn some in general stuff that can help you with the test. And then the app, well, that's just convenient and you can get lots of help from that and, and use it whenever you want to use it on your subway commute you know, to school or something like that. Yeah, exactly. So when, I, when it was about a year ago, I started developing these, these um, tools and I thought to myself, okay, so what can I, what can I actually do in a to help the students in the most like organized way? Mm. I thought of it of learn and practice, mm. learn, you learn the strategies from my YouTube or my online courses, learn lots about the test, but then you need to practice it and get feedback. So that's where the, the practice app came into, came into play. And that was months of hard work, uh, sleepless nights, but we got it done and it, it works very well. And yeah, we, a lot, we get a lot of good feedback from, from that. Fantastic. So what are your final words as talking to your students or potential subscribers right now? Why should they come to Luke Jones's Duolingo <laughs> English test yeah. uh, practice uh, app or the YouTube channel or, or the website? What, what do they get? Sell it to us. Yeah. Well, I actually, I, yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> so if a student wants to certify their English, I strongly recommend taking the Duolingo test. As we've talked about throughout this conversation, it's affordable, accessible, much, much uh, more friendly exam. And I think that because of the way it's set up, you can actually achieve a better score, not because the test is easier, but because you feel comfortable and more relaxed. If you want to take that test, then of course, come to my YouTube to study. We have, I have hundreds of videos on, on YouTube for free and my products, which I, I do sell on my website, uh, the cheap, the most expensive ones, like $14. So I try to make it affordable for all students and yeah, and you can contact me. I sometimes do live, live lessons where I can interact with my audience as well. Wonderful. So I'm around to. I'll do my best to answer your questions, basically, and got help it. you as much as I can. All right. So, well, let's go over it one more time to make sure we've got it all. The YouTube channel is called? Yeah, Teacher Luke hyphen Duolingo English Test. The website is? DETready.com. DET the, means Duolingo English Test. And the app is called? That's on the website. You That's can on the website. It. You can access it through the website, yes. Very good. Well, Luke Jones, once again, congratulations to you on your success. Um, this is a really interesting trend, I think, in the English as a second language uh, community where, you know, everyone is familiar with IELTS, everyone is familiar with TOEFL, mm. but maybe not everyone around the world is familiar with this new, uh, maybe perhaps better option, the Duolingo English test. Good luck in your future. Good luck with all of your endeavors. And thanks so much for uh, being on Speak, e uh, Speak English Fluently today. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much. That was, that was a lot of fun. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you once again to Luke Jones uh, for joining me on Speak English Fluently. That was a lot of fun uh, to learn about that particular topic. And once again, I wish Luke success in the future. If you want to check out some more uh, interviews that I did from my own channel, you can search Storytime Steve Hatherley, simply Storytime, one word, and then Steve Hatherley. My channel will pop up there. Lots of fun interviews that you can enjoy too. Uh, again, thank you to Luke Jones for uh, joining me on Speak English Fluently, and I hope you'll come back next time.